Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. Let's talk about the 3080 Ti today. I know a lot of you are excited about this card, and I am as well, but I feel like it's gonna be very expensive when I look at the performance of this card, and obviously where it's gonna be sitting in between the 3080 and the 3090. Um, but uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, first, we'll run over the specs, and then we'll talk about the performance of the card, and then we'll talk about the price versus the performance, and then we'll talk about availability as well, because uh, there's not very many GPUs out there so uh, should you wait for this 3080 Ti or maybe pick up something that you can just get anyway all right so if you like this video make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this okay let's talk about the specs for the 3080 Ti now I've already gone through all of this before so make sure to check out my previous videos on this and I'll leave a link in the description below but let's talk about the specs for the 3080 Ti and we have for the CUDA core count it's 10,496 CUDA cores same as the 3090 it has 328 tensor cores, 328 texture core units. So this is the same as the 3090 again. Now where it's different is the boost clock. So the 3080 Ti has 1635 megahertz and the boost clock for the 3090 is 1695 megahertz. I think that's where they're gonna to try to sell you the overclock variant of the uh, 3080 Ti because if they create a bigger gap, then it's easier to sell those overclock variants for a little bit more money now for the memory this is the biggest difference between the two cards so the 3080 ti the memory uh, that it has 20 gigabytes of g6x and the 3090 has 24 gigabytes of g6x and for the memory bandwidth the 3080 Ti, that obviously comes to 760 gigabytes per second, so that's the same as the 3080. And then the 3090 has 936 gigabytes per second, so there's 20% more memory bandwidth uh, on the 3090 as well. So how that affects uh, 4K gaming, well, we really need to test that out on, I guess, uh, the latest games. So we really have to wait for the reviews to see how much of a difference that 20% extra memory bandwidth is going to be. But I would say, if I had to guess now, uh, you might get a little bit longer with this 3090 uh, over the 3080 Ti, but there's just a lot of other cards out there right now with a lot less memory bandwidth. So the 3070 has 500 gigabytes per second, the 6800 XT has 512 gigabytes per second. So there's a whole heap of cars that don't have this amount of memory bandwidth so it should at least last next generation this memory bandwidth anyway uh, this 700, 760 gigabytes per second so you if you're thinking about whether this is going to last till next generation yeah I think the 3080 Ti will be okay uh, if you want to use it for this generation and the next generation Okay, let's talk about the performance of the 3080 Ti compared to all of the other cards. And I've taken it from our favorite website, Tech Power Up. So we're gonna look at the relative performance here relative to the 3090. So the relative, uh, sorry, the 3090 is 100% uh, performance and the 3080 Ti I've also said as a hundred percent as well because I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt even though I know it's not gonna be a hundred percent it'll be somewhere in between the 3080 and the 3090 um, so when we go to look at the price versus the performance um, I'm just going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it's going to be higher I don't know how much higher maybe it's 95 percent but let's say it's a hundred percent for now so um, the 3080 is 91%, the 3070 Ti is 80, then the 3070 is 70, and then the 3060 Ti is 63. So you can kind of see all of this is just 10% down each time, roughly, okay? So um, let's put that into a graph, and I know you guys don't really need to see a graph of the price versus the uh, the GPUs, but you can see that the 3090 is way ahead. And I'm not gonna dwell too long on this graph because um, it's really to set up my next graph. So as you can see here, the 3090 is $1,500. And I think the 3080 Ti will probably be $1,000. At least it's gotta be somewhere in between the 3080 and the 3090. And the 6900 XT from AMD is gonna be $999 as well. So I think if they price it more than the 6900 XT, then people will start to consider the AMD card. And I don't think they want to do that. I think they want to take as many sales as they can from the enthusiast market. So they'll probably just price it around the same price. 
Now, what I really wanna talk about is the price versus performance ratio. And we're just gonna do a price versus the relative performance. So I've taken these numbers from this table here and I've just gone uh, and divided it by the relative performance. So you can see here for the 3090, it's 14.99 per percentage point. And then the 3080 Ti is, 30, uh, is 9.99 per percentage point. But what I find interesting is that the other cards are around six to eight dollars per percentage point. So what that's really saying to me is that I feel like the 3080 Ti is a little bit overpriced and you can kind of see it anyway just from looking at the prices because you're only getting 10% performance but you have to pay $1,000 for it. So what you're really paying for that extra $300 is that extra VRAM. So the question is, is 10 gigabytes of VRAM worth $300? And I think that's ultimately down to if you're gonna keep the card for the next generation as well. So if you're going to upgrade next generation, well, you could probably just get the 10 gigabyte 3080. I think that would be a safe enough bet because uh, most of the other NVIDIA cards are, have low VRAM amounts as well. And it, if the developers out there, they know that people have these cards, then they're gonna just design for this amount of VRAM. They're not gonna go over it because then nobody could play the game. So I think if you want to keep this card for longer than this generation, then you might think about getting that 3080 Ti with the 20 gigabytes and that would last you a little bit longer. But um, when you actually use it for the next generation, this 3080 Ti will end up becoming say like the 4070 or the 4060. So that's what you're kind of weighing up that decision. Now, I also want to say that um, for the other cards here, just quickly, the 3080, the 3070 Ti, 3070 and 3060 Ti, um, seems like their performance drops by about 10% each time and you drop $100 as well. So you can kind of see on this chart here that they're all around the same ballpark in terms of price to performance ratio. So if you want the best value, then you really want to get one of these cards uh, from the 3080 on down. So the other thing to think about is the availability of these cards. And they say they're gonna be launching in February, but can you really get one in February? And I don't really know that you're gonna be able to, given what we know about the 3080 launch, that launched in September and it's now December and it's still really hard to get a card. So uh, it's just been a waste of time, frankly. It's been a waste of the three months. And if I could go back to the start of this year and tell myself to get a 2070 Super back then, and then I would have a PC for the entire year and I wouldn't have to worry about this. I can just wait a little bit longer to upgrade. And I think that would have been the smarter decision, obviously. So I think people should start to think about things like uh, what they can actually get rather than the card that they actually want or the ultimate card that they want to get. And so if you look at all of these cars, the 3060 Ti, when you look at the price performance ratio, it's the same as the 3080. So you're gonna be getting just as good uh, performance for that price as you are for the 3080. And the 3080 Ti is a very expensive car. That's maybe the car that you want if you can get it for like a discount or um, which brings the price versus performance ratio down a little bit. But at the moment, uh, these other cars from 3060 Ti to 3080, they're really good cards. So if you can get one of those and you're not wasting your time trying to just get a the, o the one and only card that you must have, then I think uh, that makes a lot of sense as well because you can get back to your normal life, you can get back to playing games and then you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. But make sure to keep watching my videos uh, for more um, video card news like this. But I think, yeah, I think a lot of people have wasted their time over trying to get these cards. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this one. Make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.